the middle of a full-on shark feeding frenzy and swim to the safety of a nearby reef without being attacked. feeding frenzy, where there's less of a chance I'll be attacked. Wow, this shark looks straight at me, looking at me, and it's almost like they're trying to feel whether I'm scared, whether I'm prey, whether I'm got an elevated heart rate, whether I'm panicking. Oh. But luckily, what they're attacking is the dead fish guts all around me. And not me. That's pretty exciting. But the key was maintaining a calm composure. It definitely takes a little bit of kind of, you know, uh, mind and heart just to keep that calm. But pretty exciting, so. Long distance swimming at sea burns a huge amount of energy. If you were stranded on a reef like this, you'd have to spearfish to survive. And that is much more dangerous than it sounds. The difficult bit is gonna be not so much catching the fish, it's gonna be keeping hold of that fish because I know from experience, as soon as you spear it, and there's that panic flapping of the fish on the end of the spear, that is just like, sending out code red to all the sharks. I need to stay aware of everything around me, as this reef is a feeding ground to two of the world's most dangerous sharks, the tiger and the bull. Sharks have no manners. Surely there's a rule that if you catch it, it's yours. Just nick someone's dinner. But soon the rising tide will submerge this reef, so I don't have much time to prepare my meal. <laughs> Lucky for me, my favourite way to eat fish is straight from the sea, fresh and raw. I'm a Brit. I like chips with my fish. But in the absence of chips, this is pretty good. Bang it down. Okay, the tide's gonna totally submerge this rock soon. The problem is I'm seeing a lot of sharks still around me. Definitely running out of rock and island. Okay. There he is. Yeah, just about in the nick of time. OK, we're good. Good? Yeah, thanks, buddy. How are you? Yeah, good. 
Thanks for the pickup. Bless you. <laughs> My buddy Tristan has been studying sharks in these turbulent waters for over a decade. I've asked for his help. So what we've got here is, is kind of two quite distinctive habitats. We're hoping to find giant hammerheads and aggressive bull sharks that stop here to feed. OK, so really, all of this area now is good. Yeah, prime real estate for big sharks. What? This is kind of latest stuff. It's a, an electric repellent, basically creating an electric field that's really powerful, and the idea is that it, it disrupts the shark's electric sense as they're coming in. All sharks have tiny sensory pores around their face and mouth called electroreceptors. This gives them a powerful sense that they can use to detect minute electrical impulses produced by the movement and even the heartbeat of potential prey. OK, so this is just full of fish guts, fish blood. Oh, smell of that. <laughs> if this isn't going to attract the sharks, nothing will. <coughs> oh, God, I've got a load of my... <coughs> Good for you, Bear, pushing everything to the limit, but it's certainly something I would never do. Not in these waters, there's too many sharks. This is her. So walkie talkie. Good, good for you, Bear. Fish jump. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if I stink. My final challenge will be to free a tiger shark caught on a long line without getting attacked. Although sharks are abundant here, around the globe, nearly 100 million are killed every year. Some are targeted directly in shark fishing, but more than half are caught accidentally in commercial long line and drift net fisheries. This has led to population declines of over 70% in some species of sharks. One of the best tools we have for protecting these sharks is data. The more we know about shark behavior and migration patterns, the better we can protect them from fishing and accidental bycatch. Yeah, look, you can see it's a tight line running off this main one. There's something on it, there's definitely something on it. Can you see it that side? Yeah, it looks like a shark. I think we need to get in and check it out. OK, let's move. Unexpectedly, the shark has stopped moving, and that can be a bad sign. So while Tristan calls in the shark lab, I'm going to dive down and check her condition. Once I get inside the 30-foot danger zone, the shark could easily swing around and attack me. It's a risk I've got to take. OK, let's do this. come dangerously close, but the shark still doesn't move. So I decide to take a major risk and give it some help. Thankfully, it doesn't swing around and try to bite me, and the shark seems to be okay. 
Now that the Shark Lab team is here, they can use a line to pull her up to their boat so we can free her from the hook and tag her. OK, here she comes. The tag will help protect her by allowing conservationists to track her movements. OK, so look, you'll see the float stuck in her mouth. Hopefully we can get it out. Looks good. Can I get the bolt cutters? There we go. Come down at the throat. Just let spit it out. Spit it out. Yep. Here we go. Okay, so we managed to free her, but now we're going to quickly get this tag on her and then set her free. And you just hold it tight there. That's the drill going through the dorsal fin. The dorsal fin is made of cartilage, so this doesn't hurt the shark, but allows us to firmly attach the tag so it will stay secure for a long time. Okay, just ready for the tracker. You can see the little antenna here we're putting on. And the point of these is to have an idea of where they're moving to, their behavior, their patterns, and what they need to survive. OK, you got it? No, no, the other way, other way. I think the best thing, really, at this point I can do is get into the water, try and stabilize it, hold that okay, fin. So, OK, I got it there. Let's try and get that last on it. OK, we you hold, hold, hold here, OK? Yeah. One, two, three. Okay. There, there it goes, there it goes. Now that the tag is on, it's time to release the shark. So mask on. I need to guide her past the lines to make sure she swims off safely. This is the moment of truth. Okay, so we're all done. One final thing remains, and that is to name the shark. Tristan has got two kids. This tiger shark's a girl. We're calling it Isla after his daughter. We're going to be able to track her online as she swims around the sea. But what you got to remember, if you're in the water with a shark, first of all, stop panicking. You know, that's a golden rule. Then if you need to, to guide it away if it's coming in. If it's getting still more aggressive, you're going to push it away. It's still going for you, you can move, which is move towards it. And um, that's likely to deter it. And ultimately, the last one is gills. Go for the gills. This is as much about trying to educate people, say, if you know what you're doing in the water, A, you don't need to become shark food, but B, you can help be part of protecting sharks and their legacy. Because in the water, you're so vulnerable. But also there's that sense of calm that often I feel when you're dealing with something dangerous, where it really makes you feel alive in the best sense of the word. Look at those teeth straight towards them. Wow. And I think nature gives you that feeling for one purpose, which is don't mess it up, do this right, don't get eaten. Discovery, Shark Week. Watch it. Discovery, so man, man,